All right, well, it's been some time since we last sat down to rank the captains of the Gote 13 here on this channel. In fact, the last time I did this, I don't even think I had a mic. Um, but since we've now reached 150,000 subscribers, and thanks again for that, by the way, I thought that milestone gave us the perfect opportunity to revisit this topic, except this time we won't be looking at the captains from the end of the series. No, in this video I want to rank the captains of the Soul Society arc from the weakest to the strongest. And as always I'll attempt to be as objective as possible, though this was a very difficult list to make, there are so many variables to consider. As always with these lists, my criteria attempts to encompass as much as possible about each individual character, ranging from their overall power and strength as shown off in the story, to their Zanpakuto's unique abilities and how versatile they are as well, right the way down to the character's approach to and philosophy on battle, as well as their intelligence and their experience, so hoping to create a complete package for each individual. Now I'm well aware that when it comes to lists like this you can never please everybody and I imagine that many of you will disagree with my list and that's absolutely fine, it's only my personal opinion as to where I think these guys should be placed. If you do disagree with me, please do leave your lists down in the comments below, I would absolutely love to see them, it's really fascinating to see where we differ in our placements of these individual characters but also where we might share the same opinion as well. And finally one last piece of housekeeping before we begin, even though this video is going to be focused on the captains from the Soul Society arc, there will still be some spoilers for the Thousand Year Blood War in here as well. So to kick things off with number 13, now considering who these characters are, no one here is weak by any kind of conventional definition, however somebody had to bring up the rear, and for me that's the captain of the 9th division, Kaname Tosin. Now with Tosin it's not so much a question of power as it is a question of personality. Particularly in the Soul Society arc, Tozen is depicted as being something of a pacifist who hates fighting, who hates unnecessary battles, who hates getting involved in brawls that he sees as being somewhat beneath him. His almost polar opposite in the Gote 13, Kenpachi Zaraki, who is something of an expert on fighting, actively schools Tosun in the middle of their battle, claiming that Tosun is exposing his own vulnerabilities in the middle of a fight because he is fearful of every single attack. And also Kenpachi notes that Tosun is one of the few captains that's actively afraid of dying. All of this circles back around to create a character who doesn't seem that suited to fighting. Now, Tosin has his fair share of pretty nasty and awesome abilities, including his Bankai Suzumushi Sukishiki en Markorogi, which robs his opponent of all of their senses. But even when he ensnares Zaraki in that trap, he seems unable to truly capitalise on it. Combine that with a weirdly nebulous and seemingly fairly useless Shikai in the form of Suzumushi as well, which seems to only have one particularly potent ability where he knocks out Uryu Ishida, but then never uses it again, which makes me think maybe it's more limited than he lets on. And you've got a character who I think is fairly deserving of this spot on the list, although I could be underestimating Tozen, because there is plenty to shout about with this character. I mean, he had Bankai when he was in fifth seat for crying out loud, which is pretty impressive, but it doesn't necessarily mean he stacks up to the rest of his contemporaries in the present day. Plus, the fact that he must be a fairly young captain overall means he might not have the same level of experience either, which is how he can go into fights with this somewhat naive attitude. Coming in at number 12 on our list, and this might make some people upset, but you know, just hear me out on this, is the captain of the 10th division, Toshiro Hitsugaya. Now, there are many characters in Bleach, including a number on this list, who undergo serious character development, serious power growth across the entirety of this series, and of course, Hitsugaya is one of those characters. If this were a list about the Thousand Year Blood War, he would be up there with the heaviest of hitters, but it's not. 
It's about the Soul Society arc, and it's clear to me that during this arc, Hitsugaya is one of the youngest, one of the most inexperienced, and frankly, one of the most immature characters among the Gotei 13. He's hot-headed, quick to anger, and often allows his emotions to make him reckless, rushing into fights, which seems to almost always get him defeated. Obviously, Hyorin Maru is a very impressive Zanpak Toe with a litany of abilities, but it, it really comes down to how well Hitsugaya can use those powers, how much he can actually get out of them. And as for his Bankai Daiguren Hyorin Maru, well, it's immature. It's not even completely mastered by this point in the story yet. Once again, were this the Thousand Year Blood War arc where we actively know that Hitsugaya has trained to improve and complete his Bankai, he would be up there in the rankings, no question about it. But where we stand in the Soul Society arc, everything about Hitsugaya shows him to be one of the youngest, one of the most immature and often unprepared captains in the series, with plenty of room to grow, which he will obviously get to in the future. Number 11 on this list hurts me as it's one of my favourite captains in the series, but unfortunately he's nearly always placed at the bottom when it comes to these rankings, and that's of course the captain of the 7th division, Seijin Komamura. Now, Komamura's weaknesses are well documented, let's face it. He's absolutely massive, he's an enormous target, he's not particularly fast, he doesn't seem to have much proficiency with any of the Shinigami arts outside of Zanjutsu and Hakuda as well. Basically, he's just a bit of a tank. He's massive, he's immensely physically powerful, and he's incredibly durable as well. In fact, I think, and this might be a fun fact, but I'm pretty sure Komamura is the only captain who manages to endure one of Aizen's strikes during their fake Karakura Town Battle Royale. Everyone else is basically taken out in a single hit. Komamura takes two. So that's Komamura's dubious honour. But unfortunately, the rest is pretty much written on the wall here. He is a huge target. His Bankai Kokujo Tengen Mio, while containing pretty much unparalleled physical strength, is an even bigger target than Komamura himself, exposing a massive weakness. But also, from a personality standpoint, Komamura might come across as being a pensive and calm character, but actually, again, being one of the younger captains, he is quick to anger and often rushes in when his blood begins to boil, and as with Hitsugaya, we see it often costs him big time. So while I do really like Komamura, I think his massive presence and physical strength is enormously offset by very stunted versatility and just overall being a massive target. Kicking off the top 10 on our list is one of the characters who was absolutely the hardest to rank, because this is the character where there are just so many variables that can be brought into question. And I imagine it's probably fairly obvious by now, but this is the captain of the 12th division, the mad scientist Mayuri Kurotsuchi. Where Mayuri would eventually end up as something of the MVP for the Soul Society in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, in the Soul Society arc, we're presented with a slightly more strict back and pure version of the character. Don't get me wrong, he still has a number of his devious tricks up his sleeve. He has his extendo arm, he's able to pull this rather nasty looking sickle out of his ear, and he's even able to turn into goo to escape a potentially fatal situation. All of these things are unique to Myri. No other captain has access to this kind of body augmentation. At the same time, Mayuri's strength is in preparation, and the Soul Society arc shows us exactly what happens when he comes up against something that he has no idea about, that he's never seen before, that he was never expecting, and Uryu's Let's Steal ability is just that. And now, while this is a very powerful ability, Uryu totally steamrolls Mayuri, to the point where once he's activated it, this captain stands absolutely no chance. Mayuri has nothing that he can use to counter this. And we actually see that because Mayuri is so very arrogant, that he has a tendency as well to fly off the handle when things suddenly start not going his way. And because of this, he rushes into using Bankai. His Bankai, by the way, Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo, is way more basic here than it would end up later on in the series as well. And it, like he, is instantly devastated by Uryu. So while Mayuri has his hallmark advantages, he's immensely smart, he's able to mess with his own body in ways that seemingly break the rules of the game, 
Particularly in the Soul Society arc, we see a more delicate and vulnerable version of this character, which sounds weird to say. And again, Mayuri later on with his absolutely broken, modified Bankai would be considerably higher up the rankings. This version, even with all the variables to consider, I'm fairly happy at putting him at number 10. Coming in at number 9, we have the most recent recipient of a character analysis video on the channel as of literally a couple of days ago, being the captain of the second division and the leader of the Omnits kiddo, Soifon. And Soifon is another of these characters who is difficult to rank, and I can't help but feel like we're starting to reach that middle-of-the-pack group of balanced captains. Although Soifon is uniquely proficient in many areas that other captains don't seem to be. For example, she is an absolute master, a beast of hand-to-hand -hand combat, and blazingly quick as well to complement it. And we see that she is able to fairly easily keep up with Yoroichi for the majority of their fight. At the same time, she combines this with a fatally dangerous Shikai Suzumabachi, which kills in two stings, making a recipe for the perfect assassin. At the same time, Soifon has a number of drawbacks as well, most notably within her personality. She is, much like the other younger captains before her, Komamura and Hitsugaya, she is brash, reckless, impatient, and even throws childish tantrums. At the same time, her Bankai Jakuho Raiko Ben verges on being almost totally useless, as far as I'm concerned. So what you have with Soifon is a very intimidating and powerful captain who excels in her own unique areas, but when looking at the rest of the captains to come on this list, I just don't think she quite measures up. In 8th place on our list is another character that might invite some controversy, however I also think this character is perhaps the greatest barometer for how much captains can change between this arc and later in the story, and of course I'm talking about the captain of the 11th division, Kenpachi Zaraki. Were this a list for the Thousand Year Blood War arc, you'd be looking at a character who is easily in 2nd place, if not possibly in 1st place. But here in the Soul Society arc, Zaraki is really only starting his journey. Much like Hitsugaya, Zaraki goes through a lot of development where his power is concerned, and it's really fascinating to watch, as his is perhaps the most overt development of them all. Here in the Soul Society arc, he is bested by Ichigo in Shikai form, but this simply means Zaraki can start unlocking the limiters he has subconsciously placed on himself. By the time he gets to the Thousand Year Blood War, he is emotionally communicating with his Zanpak toe and unlocking immense power. Back here, he's basically just swinging his sword like a madman and is extremely durable. But outside of that, he hasn't got that much else going on for him. He obviously has colossal Reiatsu, untapped potential, which will be awoken the further we go into the series. But back here, it definitely seems like Kenpachi is lacking. The fact that Ichigo is able to defeat him in Shikai is very telling, and the fact that Kenpachi is used as that middle stepping stone narratively says to me as well that Kubo hadn't yet wanted to make him the absolute behemoth of power that he becomes later on. That being said, Zaraki obviously has a lot of things going for him as well, which will really help propel him up the ranks when we go deeper into the story. He's obviously quite intelligent, but more crucially has a ton of battle experience. As I mentioned in Tosin's segment, Zaraki is literally teaching him what he is doing wrong in a fight in the middle of their battle. So in that sense, it's rather impressive that Zaraki is as high as he is on this list, considering he is literally just using brute force when it comes to fighting. He's swinging around effectively an empty blade in a world full of people using magical powers. Now, positions 7 and 6 on this list are, in my opinion, practically interchangeable. Either one of them could have taken either spot, as I think they are nearly identical in terms of their battle prowess, and I actually think Kubo does go out of his way to draw some similarities between these two characters as well. So one of them had to go at 7th, but really either of these could be in either of these positions. But in 7th place, I've put the captain of the 3rd division, Gin Ichimaru. Now, Gin is a little bit difficult to rank, again, purely because he doesn't get that many opportunities to actually fight. But we know he is a prodigy, we know he is whip-smart and careful when it comes to fighting, we know that he is very much a guarded 
combatant who kind of lies and tricks to his opponent to throw them off the scent. All of this comes together to make an incredibly intelligent fighter, someone who is extremely powerful and who was killing third seats when he was just a little child. Add on to this Gein's Zanpakuto Shinzo, which is extremely dangerous for its unpredictability as well as his Bankai Kamishini no Yari, which as we discussed again relatively recently, is extremely powerful. And you have a recipe for a very dangerous, a very sly combatant who could suddenly spring and easily get the better of you. In many ways, position 7, Gein, and who we have in spot number 6, feel like perhaps the ultimate all-rounder captains. They feel like the most balanced of all the captains we get to see out of this Gote 13. Gein seems to be very skilled in almost every single way. He's leaf, he's fast, like I said, he's unpredictable, and his Zanpak toe is just plain scary. You could argue that in the Soul Society arc it looked like Hitsugaya was pressuring Gein, but as far as I'm concerned, Gein was barely even trying. And so speaking of number six in our list, we have the captain of the sixth division, Byakia Kuchki. Byaki is an interesting one in that I feel like he might fall a couple of places in a list further down the story as other characters like Zaraki eventually overtake him. But at this point, Byakia is absolutely top dog when it comes to this kind of middle tier of captains. And there's a reason why he is used as the end boss of the Soul Society arc. Much like Gein, Byakia is lightning fast, incredibly intelligent, and has, again, almost the perfect all-rounder Zan Puk Toe. Sinbon Zakura, both in its Shikai and its Bankai form, acts as both the perfect offense and the ultimate defense as well. And really, with Byakia, He's always been presented as the model Shinigami. Really, his own flaw is his seeming lack of emotion, his cold disposition to even members of his own family. But when it comes to fighting, he is ruthless, he is cold, and he is powerful and pragmatic. And we get to see virtually everything he can do as early as the Soul Society arc. His multi-tiered Bankai, for instance, the fact that he can use it with such incredible grace and versatility and get so much out of it as well at the same time. Right the way down to the fact that he is also a proficient user of Kido and incredibly fast with Shunpo as well. There could be an argument made, to be honest, that Byakia maybe even deserves a higher spot than this in this list, but I think here, at kind of just around the halfway point, is absolutely perfect for the model Shinigami and the kind of all-rounder of the Gote 13. And now we enter the top five captains of the Soul Society arc, and number five is already going to be a little contentious. I've seen people placing this guy as low as last place, and I just fundamentally don't agree with that, but a big caveat does have to be made. And of course, this is the captain of the 13th division, Jushiro Ukitake. For me, there's plenty about Ukitake that warrants his position this high up on the list. He's obviously very intelligent, he's extremely experienced as one of the oldest captains in the Gote 13, and seems to have the innate power to back it all up as well. While his Zanpakuto Sogyo no Kotawari is nowhere near as dangerous as some of the ones higher up on this list still yet to come, it is also still pretty nasty in its own right. Of course, Ukitake's big fatal flaw is his illness, inherent to him, unique to him, and able to render him virtually immobile, even in the worst of situations. Now, sometimes I do think that Ukitake's illness is blown out of proportion a little bit. We only see it one time in the canon manga actually affect him in the middle of a battle, which is against Kaien during their flashback. But it is something that must be considered. At the same time, there is so much about Ukitake, I think, that makes him one of the strongest captains of the Gote. In the Thousand Year Blood War arc, it's noted that he has virtually the same amount of Reiatsu inside him as, like, half of the upper echelon of the Gote to support his frail and sickly body. Not only that, but Yamamoto himself even mentions that Kyoraku and Ukitake were, as he says, transcendent in battle. And 
Ukitake was ill when Yamamoto made that remark as well. And while Ukitake is difficult to classify because he doesn't really get that much time to shine, he does do some rather impressive things. Perhaps first and foremost, he actually manages to stand his ground against Yamamoto in the Soul Society arc alongside Kyoraku. The two of them are able to hold off this raging Captain Commander while only sustaining fairly moderate injuries. And I think that speaks volumes to how strong Ukitake can actually be when he's not coughing up his lungs. Perhaps Ukitake's inherently gentle disposition might make him less suited to fighting than someone like Kyoraku, for example, but I'm fairly content with having Ukitake here at number 5 on the list, but I would absolutely understand if you wanted to place him lower. And so, in at 4th place, just missing out on the top 3 is one of my absolute favourite captains, the captain of the 8th division, Kyoraku Shinsui. Now, in many ways, Kyoraku feels like the perfect warrior. While his outward nature may make it seem like he's ill-suited to battle and doesn't want to fight, unlike Tosin before him, Kyoraku can actually rise to the occasion and will step up to the plate and fight properly, even using underhanded tactics and fighting dirty to gain the advantage. It's here that we see Kyoraku's experience really come into play, and we see why he is one of the oldest and most revered captains of the Gotei 13. In many ways, Kyoraku's unique viewpoint on war, being that it's an immoral, unjust and bleak affair, stripped bare of any honour, means that he can always go all out. He can always throw himself into the battle using any means necessary to score that victory. Combine this with a Zanpakuto that is so versatile, so scarily broken and so difficult to even comprehend, let alone come up against in Katen Kyokotsu, and you have a real recipe for somebody who seemingly is nearly impossible to defeat. His Shikai Katen Kyokotsu allows him to manipulate children's games, turning them into reality, basically making Kyoraku the games master of his very own battlefield, and his Bankai, as we see in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, almost always seemingly leads to certain death. And that's why here, at fourth place, I feel like we've found the Shinigami who kind of has everything. Already, it's Kyoraku. He has basically everything you could want in terms of a fighter in the world of Bleach. He's highly experienced, but also very, very intelligent, calm, collected, often allowing his enemy to make the first move, while also being extremely perceptive of the battlefield in front of him. His mindset and philosophy on battle means that he never feels the need to hold himself back from using whatever means necessary, and his Zanpakuto is almost plain broken. In third place, we have the captain of the fourth division, seemingly the kindly, matronly healer, Retsu Yachiru Unohana. And this is really where we have to pull from the Thousand Year Blood War arc, but all of that power was available to her in the Soul Society arc, should she have decided to use it. But like I said, it could have gone either way between her and Kyoraku, but she just edged it out for me, and a lot of that comes down to experience, of which Unohana has in spades. She originates from the most bloodthirsty days of the Soul Society of the Gotei 13, where she effectively acted as Yamamoto's right hand, helping to establish the 11th Division, which would go on to become the most brutal of all divisions in the Gotei. Not only that, but I feel like people have a tendency to underestimate Unohana, to really kind of underserve just how strong she actually was. When she comes up against Kenpachi in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, a, he has no eye patch on, but B, this is a Zaraki whose limiters have been lifted many times, from his fight with Ichigo, from his fight with Tosin and Kenpachi, to Noitra, to Yami. He's been through a lot of battles, and she cleaves him up hundreds and hundreds of times. She kills him over and over and over again, which implies to me, on a mechanical level, on a strategic level, on a sheer combat level. She must have been leagues above him at that point, leagues and leagues above him at that point, to be able to outclass him so handily every single time, to the point where 
Zaraki himself is elated that he finally lands a hit on her at some point, so she must be moving so blazingly quick half the time that he has no idea what's going on. And this is very fitting, I think, for the ultimate criminal of the Soul Society. It makes total sense to me that Unohana would be as powerful as she is. She is one of the founding members of the Gote. She herself even says that she is stronger than anybody but Zaraki at his absolute core, his purest form, the form that she is once again trying to unlock. And again, as I have cautioned against before, I wouldn't necessarily take characters own statements about themselves as gospel, but Unohana is the sort of character who's unlikely to lie about the power she so obviously has. Not only that, but while she is an absolute demon with the sword, she's even evolved her own prowess over the years, becoming one of, if not Soul Society's most celebrated healer, meaning that she has incredible command over Kido as well, and therefore can effectively just keep herself going in a battle with no end. Yes, we didn't get to see a lot of Unohana, and that was a real shame, but what we did see of her, in my opinion, more than earns her this spot near the top of the list. She is an incredibly dangerous and scary fighter, an absolute true master of the blade, which in many ways, considering Bleach is so swordplay oriented, puts her at the top of the pack. Now, ironically, the top two from the very beginning were the ones that I didn't have any problem with whatsoever. It was always going to be these two. And so coming in at second place is the captain of the fifth division, the big bad villain of Bleach, Sosuke Aizen. Even before he is fused with the Hogyoku, Aizen is on almost a totally different level to virtually everybody else. He is a master of all four of the Shinigami arts of combat, and we see his proficiency in that in many different instances, particularly with Kido, where he's pulling off moves like Danku when he's a vice captain, able to deflect even the Kido of the Kido captain himself, Tessai, and when he's one-shotting captains with a third of Kurohitsugi's true power. Aizen is, without a doubt, a true monster in the purest sense. And we see him just going on a total rampage more than once, taking out Hitsugaya in a single strike of his sword. Aizen has almost the perfect personality for battles like this. He is very calm, extraordinarily calculating, and all of this is bolstered by Kyoka Suigetsu, one of the most powerful, I dare say it, broken Zanpakuto in the entire series, giving Aizen complete and utter control of all five senses, creating illusions out of literally anything he sees fit that are damn near flawless. There's no doubt in my mind that Aizen really is well and truly one of the strongest beings in the entire series, and even at this point in the Soul Society arc, easily one of the strongest captains, right up there. It's interesting because Aizen seemingly didn't want to fight Unohana, and it's probably fairly clear that he knew her true power. That's not to say she's stronger than him, but it's to say that Aizen is smart enough to know when to bail, to know that that might have caused him to have to hold up for too long. Aizen is kind of a funny one in general, because even though he does have all the traits necessary to be at the number two spot on this list, he has the intelligence, he has the experience, he has the mindset and approach to battle that makes him successful, he doesn't really need any of that. Aizen kind of gets by by just being the best, basically, by being virtually the best at everything he does, by having sword strikes that are so powerful that he can take out basically every single captain in a single hit, one after the other, as we see in the fake Karakura Town fight, and even at the end of Soul Society arc, where he brings down Renji and Ichigo in like a couple of hits tops. So Aizen obviously unquestionably deserves his spot here on the list, but as far as I'm concerned, there is one captain that is more powerful. I feel like it always had to be him, the captain of the first division and the captain commander of the Gotei 13, Shigakuni Genryusai Yamamoto. The most ancient of all the captains, like Unohana, hailing from those blood soaked early days of the Gotei 13, which he himself founded, Yamamoto is 
in many respects, all powerful in comparison to the rest of these captains, to the point where even Kyoroku and Ukitake combined were struggling to do anything to him at all. Much like Aizen, Yamamoto is a master of all of the arts of Shinigami combat, using Hardo 96 without any incantation whatsoever, and absolutely destroying characters like Wonderweiss with just his fists. There's no denying that Yamamoto is, like Aizen, an unsuitable stoppable monster, the likes of which has never really been seen since in Soul Society, as Yamamoto himself says that no Shinigami stronger than him has been born in the last thousand years, and I think he means it as well. Obviously, on top of all of this, on top of his millennia worth of experience, on top of his fairly underrated intelligence, I would say, as well, Yamamoto has perhaps the most devastating Zanpakuto in the series with Ryujin Jaka and its Bankai Zanka no Tachi, which are both in their own right nigh unbeatable, nigh unstoppable. We relatively recently did a video looking at Yamamoto versus Aizen were it to take place in the fake Karakura Town arc, and I said that I thought Yamamoto would win up until the Hogyoku started kicking in, and it seemed like most of you agreed with me. Here, Aizen doesn't even have the Hogyoku yet, and so I think that Yamamoto is easily outperforming Aizen in almost every way. And I think that's more than fair enough. I mean, this guy has been around for absolutely ages. He was the founder of the Gote 13, and he sits at the top because he's earned that place, because nobody is able to take it from him. Every time we see Yamamoto, it's a complete spectacle. An absolute dance, a torrent, a tempest of fire is unleashed. And that has always felt to me like Kubo's way of showing us that he is the absolute pinnacle of pure Shinigami power. So while there might be characters that are smarter than Yamamoto, Aizen and Kyoraku for example, there might be characters that are maybe even faster than Yamamoto, someone like Soifon perhaps, nobody brings it all together like the Captain Commander himself. And that's it for the video guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, this was really difficult to make. This was not an easy list to craft, but I'm pretty content with what I've come up with, with the placements that we have here. Do let me know in the comments below how you feel about my list. Is there anything you would change? I'm sure there probably is. Like I said, please let me know your lists, leave them in the comments below. Hit subscribe if you haven't done already. Once again, thanks so much for 150,000 thousand subscribers, I really do appreciate it. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. And I'll see you then.